Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWint. Today we're unboxing the Microsoft Surface Pro X, and this is a spec bump update. Microsoft is very clear about that. That's why it's not called the Surface Pro X2. Um, so there's very little that's different here. One is that it comes with a Microsoft SQ2 processor, which we'll talk more about. The other thing that's new is that it comes in a new platinum color, right? So it was only black. Um, with the with um, when they first announced the, the first gen, because this is still considered a first gen product, it's considered to be a new configuration of the first gen product. In fact, um, interesting interesting fact: the um, the Surface Pro X was the first Surface product to to launch only in a black color since the Surface Pro Two, which. I find kind of interesting. Cause remember, it used to it used to all be black, right? Surface RT, Surface Pro, Surface Pro Two, um, Surface Two, which was still a Windows RT product. I believe it was the first one to have the new platinum color, still made of magnesium and everything. But um, and then I believe it was with the Pro Six that they brought the black color back as an option alongside um, platinum. But that was, of course, for the um, Intel model. So now we have it on the Pro X. Uh, platinum and black, you have your choice. Now, like I said, SQ2 is considered to be a new configuration. The SQ2 processor is based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2. No surprise there. Remember, the SQ1, um, you know, my, Microsoft says a lot that there's a lot of customizations for Surface. I mean, sure. It's mostly just uh, an overclocked CPU and GPU. I've asked a lot of people what those customizations were. Uh, no one has ever actually had an answer for me. You ask the Microsoft guys, they tell you to ask Qualcomm. The Qualcomm guys tell you to ask Microsoft. You just run around in a circle. Uh, but the only answer I could really get is that um, the SQ1 had a higher CPU and GPU clock speed. The SQ2 is presumably the same story over the 8CX Gen 2. But the thing about the 8CX Gen 2 is that it's just an overclocked 8CX. So, so you had the SQ1 that was an overclocked 8CX. The the 8CX Gen 2 is overclocked even more, and then now presumably this is uh, even more overclocked than that, which is great, you know. Um, but that's also why that this is, isn't considered to be a second generation product because uh, there's no other changes in the in the specs other than just a, a clock speed bump, right? So now we talked about those two things that are different for the Surface Pro X. There are also new accessories for the Surface Pro X. Because remember, while the the chassis only came in black, the accessories only came in black as well. You only had a black keyboard. And now that was a first for Surface as a whole. You know, remember Surface RT and Surface Pro came out years ago, 2012-ish, 2013, based, you know, announcement, actual release, whatever. Um, they came out, they had those colorful keyboards, right? Um, this or not, it was just black, black. And I, I think Microsoft was just being conservative here, which totally makes sense. The last time they made an ARM Surface, it did not go well. That was the Surface RT and the Surface 2, right? So obviously trying to be conservative. You don't want to over, you don't want to make a huge supply of different configurations because if it doesn't sell, then you're stuck with those configurations, right? And they don't want that. And you also have to remember that, th by the way, this is not called the type cover. They don't call it type, this is called a Surface Keyboard. And you gotta remember, this does not fit on a Surface Pro Series um, tablet. And the interesting thing about, like, you, they redesigned the the connector to so, so that this would fit on the um, Surface Pro X. Um, the type cover, every type cover since the original, and even those old touch covers were horrible. Remember those? I'm talking too much about surface history here, but remember those? But anyway, even those original ones, like the cover doesn't fit over the dis the display of the newer models, because obviously with the Pro 3, the display got bigger and, and the shape changed. That's when they started doing 3x2, modern surface connect, all that stuff. But um the, like the the cover won't fit, but the the connector fits. So you can actually use an original Surface Pro type cover with a brand new Surface Pro Seven because the connector fits. Now this does not fit in anything except the Surface Pro X, and that is is something to remember. So so they only had the one color. Now they have several more. They have Poppy Red, 
ice blue, platinum, right? I believe this is platinum. It doesn't actually say on the box. Um, I almost feel like it, like it, it, it could be ice blue also because um, the Surface Laptop Go that I reviewed, you know, let's let's start opening. So the Surface Laptop Go that I reviewed was was ice blue, and um, ice blue is really just such a pale shade of blue that it almost looks kind of similar to platinum. But I, I think this is platinum, you know, along with the platinum Surface Pro X that they sent me. Now, keep in mind, um, you don't have to get platinum if you want an SQ2. Oh yeah. I, I believe this is ice blue. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't actually say on the box, but um, yeah, yeah. So there it is. Now this is actually a really cool design. Okay, and I got really excited about this at the the Pro X launch event last year. See the pen in there? It wirelessly charges in there. Pen garage in the keyboard, and then of course it just snaps up against the um, the device when when you're typing on the keyboard. So the pen is hidden away. Um, it's a really good idea. It's better than the, the current Surface Pen that we see with the Pro that magnetically attaches to the side of the Pro or the book or whatever. Um, I think that's really smart to have a pen garage there. The pen is called the Slim Pen. It's sold as a bundle here. So, uh, looks, looks, I mean, I, I love it. You know, I think it's the, one of the best ideas. I'm a big fan of pen garages. I, that's, that's a fairly unique solution because um, some convertibles have pen garages built into them but the pens are small so um you know if you use a pen a lot you might look for something that's a little more full size um this is more of a, a flat look so you know um pros and cons to each i guess i would prefer something like this i think it's a really smart idea now let's pull this out now um if you don't like these keyboards there are uh bridge bridge has some it's under the design for surface brand um, but bridge has a new keyboard coming out um, they'll be sending me one in a couple weeks it's called the spx plus and if you're unfamiliar with bridges products they make keyboards they have, there's two clamps on the sides sorry i just figured i'd grab the 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 pro one that i have but but there's you can see there's there's two clamps here um and so the these they have a tight hinge so this actually opens up like a laptop Right, so you don't need to use the kickstand. Um, it, it's really cool. It, 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 it gives you a little diversity in the form factor, you know, um, because um, it's, it's more lappable because there, there's a battery in here. So it's, it's fairly heavy. That makes it easy to use. So let's just put that aside. Anyway, there's one coming for the Surface Pro X, which um, I'm, I'm excited about that too. Um, so let's get this open. Let's take a look at the Platinum Surface Pro X. Now, this is an aluminum... PC, unlike um, the uh, the Intel powered Pro or uh, or a Surface Book, uh, laptop is aluminum. And what's nice about aluminum is that you can easily make other colors. That's why we've seen so many different colors for the Surface laptop. Oh, that looks nice. So 4G LTE comes standard, and that's that's one of the selling points here. It's integrated into the chipset. Oh. That is actually quite beautiful. <laughs> I wasn't sold on, on Platinum right away, but that is nice. Uh, that is a beautiful looking tablet. Yes. So let's see what else is in the box. Uh, just some paperwork here. Over here, we're going to find a power cable. It's going to be Surface Connect, as always. And... Um, you know, it does have USB Type-C. It does not have USB Type-A. So that is just something to be aware of. 65 watt charger, which means that um, you're gonna get some fast charging on this. Remember, this is, this is an, ARM, uh, an ARM CPU on this device, which means that it's going to um, be very power efficient. You're gonna get some great battery life out of it. Now. That also means that uh, it'll charge fast with a 65 watt charger. Let's see if I can get this back in the box, geez. Now, just a couple things about configurations. Let's pull this out just to show it all. Just a couple things about con configurations, right? Um, there are two platinum models. It starts at 14.99, and there are t and 
Okay, so it, it's a little confusing because like I said, this is just a new configuration of the original Surface Pro X and they're only for higher end configurations. So you do have to get 16 gigs of RAM. So if you want an SQ2 or Platinum, it starts at 1499. Now the Surface Pro X still starts at 999. You get an SQ1, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It comes in black. 256 gigs of storage, still black, eight gigs of RAM, 1299. 1499 now. You get an SQ2, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage available in black or platinum. However, you can still get the SQ1 with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. The price is 1499 still. <laughs> <laughs> There's no discount, you know, like, like literally the only change between those two models is, is the, is a better processor for the exact same price, but whatever. Uh, same thing at 799, um, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, platinum or black. And then of course there is the SQ1 model, which is still also 1799. Now that those SQ1 models are only in black. So for platinum, you could, you could, you have to get an SQ2, 16 gigs of RAM, and either 256 gigs or 512 gigs of storage. I know it sounds a little confusing when I say it out loud, but um, go to Microsoft.com, search for Surface Pro X, and click Configure. Um, it's a lot easier to see it. All right, so I've got this all set up and pointing it right down at that pen, which I love this design. Like like I said, it, it charges while it's in there, and... Um, you know, it's, oh, we're getting a little notification. Welcome to Surface Slim Pen, which uh, Microsoft does that from time to time, I guess, right? Where, um, where, where, just yeah. It's, uh, which hand do you write with? I'm gonna say right hand. Okay, let's. Oh, click to launch Microsoft. Oh, I guess it's already paired, so I don't have to actually do that. That's cool. Um, I mean, I don't use Microsoft Whiteboard a whole lot. Works great with all those Office apps. I'm not sure what it would do in to do. That's kind of an interesting one. So anyway, um, you can actually put it in upside down. Notice it. I don't know if you spotted that. We'll do it again. If you try to put it in upside down, it just flips right over and charges naturally. And then while you're using, while you're typing, that it's just hidden because remember, uh, it, like all Surface PCs, the keyboard props up like that. So. Um, it's hidden when you're not using, like if you're using it as a laptop, you wouldn't need the pen, so it's all, it's hidden away. And if you do need it, it's there. So um, you can take a look, um, platinum color. You know, the thing about the color, I was not sold on this. I was, I was I, I'm more of a, a, a black man, you know, for when it comes to electronics and stuff like that. Why can't I get this straight? Um, but, you know, also another thing, don't let Microsoft's marketing images fool you. Because um, you don't have to get the black keyboard with the black unit. Remember, we have we have different color keyboards now. So like ice blue might look good with black to you, or uh, poppy red might look good with the black chassis. So like like don't be afraid to mix it up. Remember that's what Surface was all about when it first came out. You had all these beautiful colored keyboards that were uh, really fun, and then you had the the black tablet. So um, you know, like like you could do that. Like for some reason, all of Mar Microsoft's marketing images, like I guess I guess when they did the Surface Pro Six in black, the whole story was black. So so they just went and um, you know all their marketing images for that used the black keyboard with the black device. But I'm here to tell you, like, don't be afraid to to you know like like it's personal. It's you. Make it make it you. It's awesome. Like like it. I don't know. I really like. Let's. It synced my background from some other PC, which is annoying. Here's the actual proper background for the Surface Pro X. Um, so let's talk about apps a little bit. By the way, it does have a fairly big top bezel. It fits a uh, webcam and an IR camera in there, which is cool. Um, interesting thing, I, I like I said, I recently reviewed the Surface uh, Laptop Go, and that does not have an IR camera, but it also has the smallest top bezel of any Surface device. So um, that uses a fingerprint sensor in the keyboard instead. So uh, Microsoft made room for the IR camera here, which is cool. But we can also talk about apps. You know, that's, that's the topic when it comes to Windows on ARM, right? Because you want to be able to run your the programs that you need. So here, here's the deal. Um, Edge obviously works. That's and it's Edge Chromium now. So so you can, you know, run the web like you would on um, 
anything, and it's awesome, right? Um, it's native ARM64. So you can run native ARM64 apps and emulated x86 apps. x86 means 32-bit Intel apps. You will be able to run 64-bit Intel apps on the Windows Insider program beginning in November, and that'll be generally available at probably like next fall. So it's going to be a while, like fall 2021 update. So um, you, you might want to be on the Insider program at some point if you want to run those x64 apps. But obviously, um, native runs best. So um, what can you run native? Like, like browsers are important. That's why I mentioned Edge first, because the thing about browsers is that they, they're um, generating code in real time. So they, it can't be cached. Uh, to run natively. So that's where the biggest performance hit is if you don't have a native one. So um, basically it's Edge and Firefox that are available. Here's that a very annoying full screen pop-up that Edge does on first run, but we can just click until it's gone. But you can notice by the way, it is, it's fast. Um, Chrome is not as fast because it's not native uh, ARM64. That's not a technical limitation. It, from what I've heard, they've had a uh, native ARM64 Chrome ready to go since like, uh, probably about a year ago, actually. So um, it's just, it's one of those things. Uh, one of the examples given to me was like, like well, it's, it's like why Prime Video took so long for Chromecast support. So it is what it is. But Edge, like for me, um, working in the browser is what I do most of the time. So that's one of the biggest things. Um, also, we've got Office, obviously. Most of Microsoft stuff is natively supported. Um, and then it's, it's other stuff that kind of is like Chrome. Uh, Slack is emulated. You'll notice it from time to time, Spotify. But, you know, it, uh, most of it's all right. Mo most of the apps that you'll want to run on a machine like this do work. There's even like, a, there's Photoshop 2018 works, but you got to run the 32-bit one. 64-bit's coming though. The, like it's just whether performance is going to be there is the question. Um, so nobody knows. Um, like insiders are going to start testing it next month and then we'll actually get to see how that 64-bit emulation goes but anyway um I'm, I'm still trying to show you the device we can talk more about apps a little bit two usb type c ports those are usb um 3.2 gen 2 10 gigabits per second each um which means if you want to do two 4k monitors you could plug one into each port um no thunderbolt 3 no surprise on an arm-based pc that's an intel thing um and then, of course, we have Surface Connect over here and the power button. Um, and by the way, um, up here is where you'll find like antennas and stuff because uh, you look at the, the general design of this um, because this is aluminum. Obviously, you're not getting you, you need antenna lines for aluminum. So um, it is a cellular PC, which is awesome. OK, folks, there you have it. The Surface Pro X. This is obviously the black. Um, not going to say Gen 1, because they're all Gen 1. This is the black one. This is the platinum one. You can make your choice on which one you like better. But, um, yeah, but like, and I, I, I definitely recommend going for SQ2 because it's better. You're more future-proof. You get 16 gigs of RAM. And if you're going for 16 gigs of RAM, it's the exact same price as the SQ1. Like, just do it, you know. Um, but um, I, I'm, I, I, I think I'm kind of taken with this... Uh, with the, with this platinum one, and I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I th I thought I'd like the black one better, but yeah, it's it's awesome. You know, so like I said, app compat is a big thing. Um, you know, it's it's better than it was a year ago, and it keeps getting better. Personally, this is one of my favorite Windows 10 PCs. I love Windows on ARM. I love uh, cellular connectivity in PCs. I think that's super important. Like it's 2020. Why wouldn't anything just be connected to the internet all the time? You know. Uh, but yeah, so it's great because <laughs> I remember I reviewed this when it came out and now I'm reviewing this and I, I am so pumped because uh, it, it's one of my favorites. You know, I wasn't a big fan of Surface at all until uh, I, th I think it was last. Yeah, it was last year's lineup with the Pro 7 and the and the Laptop 3 and, and the Pro X. And I, I felt like everything matured because like they added USB type C. That was a big thing. Like you need USB type C like. And before that, how could I ever tell you, the reader that I'm reviewing products for, like, how can I ever tell you, like, hey, you should buy this thing even though it doesn't have USB Type-C? You're going to be using it for the next five years. Um, you're going to have USB Type-C peripheral, peripherals, and you're going to need a dongle to handle. Like, I can't tell. So that was a, like, that was a deal breaker for every Surface PC beforehand to me. 
you know, and they finally had USB Type-C and everything starting last year. Um, another thing is like Surface Laptop 3, like that thing matured. Even the 13.5 one, that inch one that, that, that looks exactly the same was completely re-engineered. The weight was rebalanced. It was more lappable. It's excellent, you know. Um, and then the Pro X, it's thinner. It's not lighter. Um, it's 1.7 pounds, just like the Pro 7. And that's because this is made of aluminum and that's made of magnesium. Aluminum is a much heavier material. So they're actually the same weight, but it's thinner. It's smaller. It's got narrower bezels, you know, and it's about as thin as it could get. It's my understanding that you couldn't even make an Intel powered version of this because it's so, it's so thin and you know you you can't put a fan in there there's no room for a fan in there it's stuff like that so um but yeah so i became a, a fan of the surface lineup after last year's event when they did all that good stuff um and then um surface neo and duo were like the the up and coming things that they, they teased right they didn't show they, they didn't let anybody actually see them or touch them except well they let a couple people see them but you know like i was so excited to see them trying new things like the duo like the neo is delayed indefinitely but the the duo like it's here and it's cool you know like it's not a perfect product it's a gen one product and i know like like i i can like i tend to be tough on the product just because like when i talk to people they kind of t tell me that like everything's great like no it's a first gen product like, let's be clear about this it's very cool it's got some cool ideas um, and, and like, it's very well built, but it's not perfect. And like, let's not try to pretend it is like, I don't even think Microsoft's trying to pretend it is, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so, um, it, it, I'm, I'm glad I threw a little, some bits of surface history into this video because, um, I'm really, it's really cool where, where surface has went over the past, um, eight years, you know, like, and, and how the, the lineup has changed. So. Anyway, guys, I digress. That's I can't tell you anything else about the Surface Pro X that you don't already know, so uh, stay tuned for a review. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.